So here I am, in the middle way, having had 20 years, 20 years largely wasted, the years of l'entre-deux-guerres, trying to learn to use words, and every attempt is a wholly new start and a different kind of failure, because one has only learnt to get the better of words for the thing one no longer has to say, or the way in which one is no longer disposed to say it. And so each venture is a new beginning, a raid on the inarticulate with shabby equipment always deteriorating in the general mess of imprecision of feeling, undisciplined squads of emotion, and what there is to conquer by strength and submission has already been discovered once or twice or several times by men whom one cannot hope to emulate. But there is no competition. There is only the fight to recover what has been lost and found and lost again and again and now under conditions that seem unpropitious but perhaps neither gain nor loss. For the rest, for us, there is only the trying. The rest is not our business. Home is where one starts from. As we grow older, the world becomes stranger, the pattern more complicated of dead and living not the intense moment isolated with no before and after, but a lifetime burning in every moment. And not the lifetime of one man only, but of old stones that cannot be deciphered. There is a time for the evening under starlight, a time for the evening under lamplight, the evening with the photograph album. Love is most nearly itself when here and now cease to matter. Old men ought to be explorers. Here and there does not matter. We must be still and still moving into another intensity for a further union, a deeper communion through the dark cold and the empty desolation the wave cry, the wind cry, the vast waters of the petrel and the porpoise. In my end is my beginning. Dark, dark, they all go into the dark, the vacant interstellar spaces, the vacant into the vacant, the captains, merchant bankers, eminent men of letters, the generous patrons of art, the statesmen and the rulers, distinguished civil servants, chairmen of many committees, industrial lords and petty contractors all go into the dark. And dark the sun and moon and the Almanac de Gotha and the Stock Exchange Gazette, the directory of directors, and cold the sense and lost the motive of action. And we all go with them into the silent funeral, nobody's funeral, for there is no one to bury, I said to my soul. Be still and let the dark come unto you, which shall be the darkness of God. As in a theater, the lights are extinguished for the scene to be changed with a hollow rumble of wings, with a movement of darkness on darkness. And we know that the hills and the trees, the distant panorama and the bold imposing facade are all being rolled away. Or as when an underground train in the tube stops too long between stations and the conversation rises and slowly fades into silence and you see behind every face the mental emptiness deepen 
leaving only the growing terror of nothing to think about, or when, under ether, the mind is conscious, but conscious of nothing. I said to my soul, be still and wait without hope, for hope would be hope for the wrong thing. Wait without love, for love would be love of the wrong thing. There is yet faith, but the faith and the hope and the love are all in the waiting. Wait without thought, for you are not yet ready for thought. So the darkness shall be the light, and the stillness the dancing. Whisper of running streams and winter lightning, the wild thyme unseen and the wild strawberry, the laughter in the garden, echoed ecstasy, not lost but requiring, pointing to the agony of death and birth. Reading this now was a very, actually a very moving experience for me because I realized how influenced I have been by him. I'm reading these lines, which maybe I haven't read, oh, I can't tell you how many years, and I think, but these lines are burned in my brain. And all the time I was reading, I was thinking, Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and I, th I thought he was really um, tremendously important to me, that uh, pessimism and that uh, heroism, but that really dark sense of life, and yet still the idea that one must continue to struggle. In a way, our whole conversation, you know, you brought me all these books that I could read from, and somehow, I thought, oh, I want to read Walt Whitman, I want to read Emily Dickinson, maybe I want to read one of the great English poets like Traherne or Marvel. But somehow, magically, I picked this book up, I opened it, and I saw these lines and I thought, oh my God, I have been living with these lines in my brain for 50 years, more than 50 years, that that's what I really do think. So I thank you for the rediscovery of T.S. Eliot. <laughs>